This is the Jeff Santos Show on the Revolution Radio Network. Rebuilding America together. Now, here's Jeff. It is hour three of the Jeff Santos Show. Coming to you live from the South Coast. It's uh, turned into a gray, uh, completely gray day. It was uh, sunny at points, but uh, gray as we head into uh, the evening here. And, uh, of course, uh, football in the air as uh, we're now in the, uh, not quite fall yet, but a couple of weeks, I guess, another week or so. Uh, but, uh, you know, it is uh, getting away from summertime. That's a sad thing for me. Love the beach and uh, the summertime here, particularly in Massachusetts. Uh, we're going to be uh, going out to Seattle, and uh, our good friend, uh, Mr. Uh, Mark Taylor Canfield, has some breaking news. In fact, the enterprising uh, renaissance man of the Jeff Santos Show uh, is running there as a journalist to cover uh, some concerns uh, over oil pipelines and so forth. Uh, we're going to be uh, looking at this. Apparently, uh, one arrest, one injury report as folks protest Trans Mountain Pipeline schedule to bring Alberta tar sand oil to tankers on Puget Sound. 40 arrested at Chase and Bank of America in New York City today on as well. So we'll find out what uh, a friend MTC is uh, doing there in uh, downtown Seattle. 33 minutes past the hour. It is indeed the Jeff Santos Show that you are tuned into. We are here every Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 Eastern Time, 12 to 3 Pacific. You can check us out on Revolution Radio Network anytime, including the weekends. Uh, we run the show uh, on a loop. So the 3 o'clock hour Eastern Time is the 6 o'clock hour. 4 o'clock is 7, et cetera, et cetera. And you can listen to us throughout the weekend until we come back live Monday at 3 o'clock uh, Eastern Time. You can check us out in uh, Madison, Wisconsin, on 92.7 FM Devil Radio. And uh, check us out. You can tune in to tune in and uh, listen there uh, as well. And um, we uh, look forward to uh, some news over the coming weeks of uh, expansion and hopefully uh, you know, in more and more markets as we move along. One of those markets is the great city of Seattle. Would love to be on there because we have the great, perfect reporter uh, to do uh, a lot of great journalism for us. He is the great uh, renaissance man of the Jeff Santos Show. He is Mark Taylor Canfield. And the enterprising journalist uh, is now down in downtown Seattle with some uh, breaking news. Mr. Mark Taylor Canfield, welcome, sir. What is the breaking news down there? Out there. Well, Jeff, upset. today is the 10th anniversary of the Occupy Wall Street movement, which uh, we can talk about this more later, but uh, uh, which uh, started in basically New York City in September 17, 2011, is when people have been been given that date, that birth date. Yeah. And uh, I've actually been, it's been a really busy time because I was in the studio recording a new song. And then I got to hang out with my friend Steve Gilbert, who used toured with Soundgarden as a photographer. And then we had the virtual Burning Man. So the Burning Man event, uh, events this year were a lot of them were online with in virtual reality. With that, that was interesting. So I participated in some of that. And then today, Jeff, I was on a online conference with Stephanie Luce, who is the co-author of today's article in the Nation magazine about uh, the Occupy Wall Street movement and its legacy after 10 years. And I'm downtown in Seattle because there have been protests, uh, not only in New York City today, uh, but also in Seattle, where there have been some arrests made. Uh, we're trying to verify uh, some of this, but uh, there were, it was reported that 40 people were arrested in New York City today, outside of Chase uh, headquarters, uh, the big, the big mega bank, and then also in Seattle, uh, at one point, protesters were actually able to shut down Fourth Avenue in downtown uh, business district in Seattle's downtown business district. Uh, they had puppets and banners and a lot of, you know, the colorful kinds of things you would have seen during the Occupy Wall Street movement. And it was both a day of celebration and a day of commemoration and also a day of rededication. And in this case, uh, this, the issue 
that some people are organizing around today, one of those issues has to do with the Trans Mountain Pipeline. And by the way, just to give you an ongoing live report here, there are uh, police in the area, kind of cruising the area near the Canadian consulate, um, because surprisingly, you know, although the Canadian government, you know, and the Canadians in general seem to be, you know, some of the least controversial on the North American continent, they actually, uh, in this They're case, not good have on drawn, this issue. No, they've drawn a lot of a lot. They've caused a lot of ire um, from the Greenpeace folks and people who are really concerned about the orca whales because they want uh, Trudeau decided it was a brilliant Justin idea Trudeau. to buy a. Or excuse me, Justin. Thank you, <laughs> Justin Trudeau. <laughs> yeah. uh, made a decision. I get the sons and the fathers mixed up when it comes to these dynasties, you know. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, I know. Is it George Senior or George W? I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, they, I do. Uh, uh, I do anyway. it myself. Go ahead, my man. So he bought. Um, he decided it was a great idea to buy this failing pipeline that a lot of First Nations people are totally against up there in Canada, and he decided to buy it um, and nationalize it, uh, buy it, have the Canadian government buy it. Uh, even though it was basically losing money and it was a failing project at that time. Um, and then he, what he wants to do is he wants to bring that Alberta tar sand oil, which is extremely problematic um, in terms of spills because you can't really clean it up. It just kind of sinks and stays there and ruins the ecology on the bottom of, of the, the uh, ocean. So what you get is uh, if he has his way, you will have a major increase in tanker oil tanker traffic and we're talking huge freighters and huge tank tanker ships not just freighters but tanker ships um through some very rough waters in the puget sound or the salish sea as as we call it around here and uh i was out on the greenpeace ship the arctic sunrise following the orca whale uh migration and witnessing for myself some of the very uh dangerous waters, especially around the San Juan Islands up in the north part of the Puget Sound near the border with Canada. Um, some incredible, these strange currents and tides there that, you know, you would see like a whirlpool like 50 feet away from your boat. On one side of the boat, it would be choppy and miserable and huge waves. On the other side, it'd be totally calm. It was a very strange place. And that's where the company that used to own the pipeline said they would be most likely to have oil spills. Well, that's also where we found the uh, a pot of orca whales, and it's a, a feeding area for them. They like the salmon up there, right? Oh, so yeah. That's one of the major issues that people have been protesting today is this idea that, oh, not only are we going to let the corporations get away with this stuff, but we're going to actually let the Canadian government bring tar sand oil on t into the Puget Sound, and then it, it would be refined... Um, at several places in this area, one of them being a, a plant in Tacoma, which just just so happens to be able to process tar sand oil. It's not, uh, a lot of refineries can't, so they have to bring it to refineries that can, and then they want to ship that through, that stuff through Puget Sound, and then back out uh, through the Strait of Juan de Fuca between Canada and the United States, um, and me, then ship me, that down to Long Beach, let me, California. Yeah, let me so ask you about the Pacific West Coast. If I can, if I can, uh, Mark, I interrupt you because I'm I'm wondering about sure. your great green governor and Jay Inslee, who of course ran for president in 2020 on the environment. Has he stood tall on this? Where is he? And 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 I, I'm wondering the, the the if there's any disagreement with the Trudeau government from the more progressive British Columbia. Uh, premier, their their governor, and, and of course in Canada's uh, uh, parliamentary system, um, is, is anybody standing tall? That are is it all outside? Um, you know, protesters. Uh, is where is the government leaders here, or are they all just you know have their head down and being paid off by the fossil fuel companies? Well, they're definitely not being paid up by the fossil fuel companies, but I can tell you from firsthand knowledge, uh, three days ago. I was down on the uh, on Elliott Bay on the waterfront in Seattle, near where we're at right now, and there was a tanker, uh, an oil tanker train that looked like it went on for miles. So we may not produce oil here, but it definitely comes through this area. And but I think my my general response when people ask me that question, which you just asked, uh, is that I I don't know what the latest official statement from 
um, Jay Inslee's office is, but I haven't seen any bold public statements. Um, and he had a great opportunity on Earth Day, so if he in April, so if he did, I I hadn't heard about it. It didn't get a lot of publicity. Um, but when I do hear Inslee speaking, and when I hear my own uh, member of Congress, Pramila Jayapal, speaking, they're talking about other things. They're talking about they're not talking so much about the environment right now. They're talking about uh, public health issues. They're talking about uh, economic issues and relief for people uh, in this state. So I think that's where their head is at. It's like in an emergency management kind of point of view at this at this point. So I haven't heard as much about the environment. But, you know, we're hoping that, yeah, he will stand strong and that he and uh, Justin, not Pierre Trudeau, will, uh, I don't know, have a knockdown, drag out fight uh, up on the, in a bar in Vancouver or something where they can just, you know, fight it out and, you know, maybe Jay Inslee will kick his arse, as they would say in, in the UK. I don't know. I mean, he's kind of a big guy. I wouldn't want to go up against him. But it might come down to, yeah, these two personalities and who is going to, who has the most game, you know? I don't know if Jay Inslee is worried about it economically. I mean, just like every other state, we're struggling, although it's kind of a strange dichotomy because there's huge developments still happening. Yeah, yeah. You get the, the, you get the very wealthy Amazon and Starbucks and uh, yeah. Microsoft, and then, everybody, then there's everybody else, right? Yeah, that's continuing here. The, the As I reported before on your show, the Carpenters Union is getting a lot of uh, hue and cry from its rank and file about the poor contract offers that they feel that, uh, that have been giving to them. So, uh, and they, I think, you know, have some uh, labor capital there because, you know, obviously these billion dollar investment companies and real estate developers and corporations like Amazon and Google, uh, and, Go- and Google, by the way, is still opening buildings in Seattle. They're still building buildings. The largest guitar center north of L.A., maybe on the entire West Coast, with $3 million worth of inventory, got knocked down. And now they're building a Google tower on top of it. And when I talked to those guys, and I used to buy so many guitars there, Jeff. It was great stuff. And uh, vintage you know, stuff from Seattle, because there's so many great musicians here. I got to play Jimi Hendrix's guitar, the one he played on Voodoo Child, on uh, the LP and... Man, that place got outbid by Google so fast. They said, oh, yeah, we're a national chain, Mark, because Guitar Center has stores all over the country. But when it came to standing up against Google, they were small fry. They were just pushed aside like they didn't even exist. They just upped the cost of the lease on the building to the point where, and the cost of the building to buy it, that they, you know, they had to get out of town, basically. And I don't know what they did with $3 million worth of, uh, musical equipment, especially the guitars. Uh, but I'll tell you what, I got a drum set and, and a Les Paul uh, electric guitar for like 50% off because the last day that they were open, they were just saying, take it, Mark. Look, there's a drum set sitting there and it's missing a symbol or two, but just take it, 50 bucks, whatever. So uh, I've seen the major development going on here and it continues. I don't know how long that's sustainable, uh, but Google has still got buildings they haven't opened yet. Um, and meanwhile, you know, and I have to report this, uh, so what the governor is saying is that as of October 25th, uh, you will have to show proof of a vaccine or a negative test in order to get into a uh, restaurant or bar in Seattle uh, or, you know, music venue. Right. That's just the way it's going to be. And well, I, I like predicted that. that we were headed in that direction. I like that idea. And I, I want to I bring in our good friend John from Minneapolis, though, who has, um, you know, a, a understanding of the tar sands because, of course, Minnesota, uh, you know, is right there in the middle of the country uh, on the border of Canada, uh, like yourselves, and uh, has his uh, own history there. Uh, John, you are next with uh, Mark Taylor Canfield. Go right ahead. Yeah, um, I wanted to say that uh, Line 3 or the Enbridge Line 3, uh, they rebuilt or they're rebuilding in the middle of the drought here because we're also part of that heat um, uh, where, you know, your own city got to, what, 817 or some crazy thing like that, Lytton, uh, British Columbia burned completely to the ground. Uh, Vancouver got to 118, I think. You know, uh, so I, I just say, Hey, you know, while they're building the tar sands oil, you know, pipeline one way, they need to build another freshwater pipeline to the Pacific Northwest so they can put out 
the fires there, well, also in California, because everybody's running out of water in the western United States. This, it's just so asinine. And, yes, uh, Trudeau has bitten off the neoliberal. Uh, we're going to develop the tar sands uh, no matter what. Uh, this was, uh, you know, 15, 16 years ago when they started doing it was a big uh, mistake, obviously. And I imagine that a lot of people in Western Canada, especially Vancouver, a lot of wealthy people really don't want that oil to come through there. So they'll probably somehow put it through to areas that uh, maybe uh, don't have as much political clout. Uh, yeah, it's that's just awful. interesting. And yeah, the, the Puget Sound is absolutely beautiful. Do you really want to destroy, you know, that environment? the environment of, of the Straits of San Juan de Fuca. And yeah, Pacific Ocean comes in there, and there's a lot of dangerous currents and whatnot. I'm pretty familiar with it. So yeah, it's not a good situation. Yeah, Part exactly. of it is that you have the tides coming in and out, and there's such complex yep. uh, inlets yep. that are kind of like fjords that you would find in Scandinavia. So the, the, the water flow is just really chaotic and unpredictable. And on that, uh, uh, John, thank yeah. you for that call. I really appreciate it. I, I wonder, Mark. You know, we get getting back to you were saying about the vaccinations. Uh, you know, this to me is really important because if you guys are going to start asking for identification, you're going to be doing more mandates. Again, I look at the example of what you guys started with the fifteen dollar minimum wage, the CTAC version, uh, and what you guys did. With um, the situation with uh, legalizing marijuana, these are all things that I think that America should be looking at and and copying what you guys are doing. And again, I, I always mention Inslee because he's a progressive governor, and we need the progressive governors in this country to sort of start leading. And again, he can do it from a progressive state like Washington and a progressive city like Seattle. And I think that's the better place to start. Better to start there than in Oklahoma or someplace, right? Yes, and, uh, you know, the Occupy Wall Street movement that we're commemorating today across the country in Zuccotti Park in New York City and other places, you know, those values have fueled a whole generation of people, and those values continue today. And we were talking about that with Stephanie Luce on the, the online conference uh, call today. Uh, she's a professor of labor studies, and she was saying that... Um, we have a different dialogue today, you know, because of what happened, and it has really fueled the uh, activism surrounding the Bernie Sanders campaign for president. Uh, I know it's really fueled uh, a lot of the values associated with other local politics here and the politics of my member of Congress, Pramila Jayapal. Uh, these ideas that, you know, the, the common people, the working class, the middle class, and the poor deserve a bailout is still out there today. And we got a little bit of what, you know, Obama kept promising but never delivered during the pandemic. But it shouldn't take a pandemic to fund uh, the infrastructure of this country, whether that's the social welfare in infrastructure, the health care infrastructure, or the, the uh, transit um, bridge infrastructure. You know, we have bridges, by the way, in Seattle, that same issue where they were starting to fall apart and... Uh, um, another friend of mine who's on the city council, uh, Lisa Herbal, has done a stand-up job on trying to replace the West Seattle Bridge, you know, and securing the funding in order to do that. But, yeah, it's like somehow that promise of the Occupy Wall Street movement, which brought out together a lot of disparate folk voices, you know, but in sort of a, a consensus about uh, let's stop subsidizing the rich on... I'm blaming the poor, you know what I'm saying? And it's still happening today, but those bailouts of Bank of America, and, you know, we all remember here, I'm looking right now at the Washington Mutual Tower. Well, it's not called that now, because Washington Mutual Bank went totally bankrupt and was fined, you know, billions of dollars because of their uh, illegal and corrupted lending practices. So those kinds of corporations usually slide by, and then the rest of us, you know, uh, us working stiffs, we get the low minimum wage and can't afford, you know, to buy a home or rent an apartment in the city where we work. So there's got to be a change. And that's why some of the people out here today, by the way, I did see what looked like an arrest. There were three police and there was a woman sitting on 
looked like a little wagon kind of thing, and somebody else was uh, filming them while that, that was taking place, and now they're gone. So I'm just going to assume that they arrested that person. I heard that one. There was a report out here that one person was injured today by the police, and I hope that's not oh true. I hope I, not either. I haven't been able to verify it, but apparently an uh, emergency vehicle showed up to check that wow. person away. So. Well, hopefully they, they are they true. are okay. I want to just get a couple of quick things here in the final minutes. Uh, again, going back to what uh, your city has been known for in recent years, um, you know, not only on, on the marijuana, not only on 15 aluminum wage, but you're using free food distribution programs and subsidy and housing to help uh, alleviate some of the poverty there. Um, and, and both city government and, and nonprofit groups are involved. At the same time, once again, they're trying to recall somebody who has been an advocate of all those things and miss swant this is insane you know you get this is this dichotomy this pressure from the uh, the amazons and the uh, the boeings and uh, uh, the the microsofts of the world going after people who are just trying to help others and so on of course the socialist democratic socialist uh, city councilor who of course has survived time after time when these big shots come in and try to take her out and she responds with more people action and ends up winning uh, re-election tell me more about that Yes, I could definitely say that she's sort of an Occupy candidate as well. For When she ran for office, it was definitely based on some of the grassroots organizing that took place during that movement, um, especially small businesses, labor groups, socialist groups, all kind of environmental groups, all kind of working together. And then later, the artists, uh, the musicians trying to save the show box, you know, with 150 artists around the country that signed on to that. So she's been uh, at the lead of some very progressive movements, including the $15 an hour minimum wage that went national. She's an international figure, so she is a lightning rod, much like AOC or <laughs> Omar, you know, in the United States Congress. So uh, she attracts a lot of negative attention from the business interests in this town. And just like, you know, happened in California, they got together and decided to try to basically ruin her uh, financially uh, through legal challenges. And so that cost a lot of money. She had to do a lot of fundraisers. Um, and then, yeah, the f- free food distribution programs, that goes back to all- Occupy Wall Street, too, because some of the most successful things that happened as a result of that movement were the Sandy Relief uh, projects, the volunteers that got together there to help people out after the storm there, and then uh, free health clinics were established and roving vans down in Oregon that uh, would take p- care of people, you know, for free, their health issues and stuff like that. So. It began this whole sort of volunteer movement to try to provide the services that, you know, let's face it, major corporations weren't giving to their employees and uh, the minimum wage employees especially, and that, the you know, our own governments had failed to provide. Because, and here's a quick thing, it's important, um, a lot of people think that uh, Occupy Wall Street started in Zuccotti Park on September 17, 2011. Actually, uh, people were occupying the Wisconsin State House and the Capitol Building uh, long before that. And we were occupying the the Olympia State Capitol building in Washington State in solidarity with the folks in Wisconsin because of huge budget cuts and these austerity measures that were, you know, cutting off people's uh, medical insurance and dental insurance and things. So you had uh, thousands of union workers out there marching, and we occupied the uh, Olympia Rotunda. Yeah, well, you know, that's the typical New York media had to start there because even though you really guys started the movement in 2000, as uh, people like Robert Craig and Ben Jealous have talked about on this show, uh, you know, back with, uh, you know, the WTO stuff. So that's really where the whole movement started. And, of course, because it was Wall Street, because it was New York City, number one media market, you know, and it has to happen in New York uh, for it to be on the news, you know, that was the reason why, you know, it it, it is the Connie Park was the case, but that was not the beginning and the origins of it. That's why I think that Seattle is always this place that we should look at how things begin, you know, and that that's why I think that this vaccination thing is a great thing, checking the vaccination cards. You can do it in Seattle, you can do it around the country, and uh, I think you guys need to be the incubator of everything progressive in this country. You have a progressive uh, city councilor in Sawani, you have a progressive leader in Jayapal that's pushing the Democratic Party in the right direction, uh, particularly through the Progressive Caucus. So uh, kudos to you guys, man. And, and that's why we love to be in Seattle someday, uh, you know, both broadcasting and, uh, and spending time and, and, and having a, a good micro brew with my friend MTC. 
That would be great. Uh, I do want to say that back in 2011 and before that group that sat in on the state capitol, uh, Occupy the State Capitol, they called themselves Occupy Washington. So even the name was already being used. So thanks Here for you helping set that straight. And your greatest talk show in the United States, folks, you're listening to it right now. But you can check out my stuff at YouTube. We got some new music coming out. You can hear my music at SoundCloud too. But I'm all over Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. So anytime uh, you'll be able to check me out uh, and the stuff I do with Democracy Watch News because we're busy. <laughs> you are indeed. Hey, continue to rock and roll, man. You're the best. And uh, I know we the Mariners play the Red Sox really tough. I set up really late to watch it. Uh, we won a couple, of two out of three, but it was a hard fight. Uh, good luck to you guys there, and good luck to the uh, the Kraken as well as the season begins in a few weeks. Uh, Mark, have yourself a great weekend, my friend. Always great chatting with you, my man. Uh, enjoy your weekend. Keep on rocking from Seattle. We will, man, and you do it. Uh, you're the best. Uh, Mark Taylor Canfield, follow him on Twitter. Democracy News, uh, it's all there. He's the best. Um, MTC, have a great weekend. Uh, I want to thank Mar Ron Kreider for producing this broadcast. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for calling in the best callers in talk radio in America. We uh, ask you to uh, keep on fighting, folks, but peacefully, uh, particularly after what's scheduled for tomorrow. Uh, keep on listening. We'll be back next week with a lot of great guests. Ben Jealous may be one of them. Until then, have yourself a great weekend. My name is Jeff Santos. It's my time to say I gotta go.